Nokia TV. This week on the show, our new coach Frank Natal brings in win number one in the usual Kogalo style. You know, every game is going to be a battle, and um, yeah, it was good to get three points today, and it's good to stay at the top of the league. And each month, we ask you to tweet and tell us who you would like featured as your player of the month. This month, you picked the man that we call Gattuso. And we find out why the second time around is even sweeter than the first. Before, 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 so join me, Edward Quach, for the next 30 minutes as we celebrate the club that we love so much. This is Gorba Here TV. We start here, in the land of a thousand hills. It was during the Sakafa Kagame Club Cup in Kigali where we caught up with our current crop of players as they were put through the ringer in a typical Kogalo gym session. But what goes into fitness here at Gorma here FC? Thomas Joffrey, fitness trainer at Gorma here Football Club. Thomas Joffrey is Kogalo's fitness trainer and the man tasked with ensuring that the players optimize their performance on the pitch each week. Uh, importance of fitness, uh, as we all know, for you to play good football, you must be fit. That means that you should be free from injuries and uh, you should be ready to face any opponent anytime. So it is important that uh, as workers of Gormaya as players, they'll give their best provided that they are fit. Fitness is not just about weights, crunches and press-ups. Nutrition plays a vital role in keeping footballers fit. It is something that Thomas takes very seriously. We do usually advise the players uh, in collaboration with the team doctors. We advise the players on which type of food to take on depending on the day of the match. As well, maybe an example is that uh, when we are from the match, we advise them to take more protein. And then as we really approach the match, we reduce the number of proteins. That include uh, more carbohydrates in their food so that they can have the energy to partake the match. So we just do advise them mostly. However, keeping a squad full of players fit does not come without its challenges. A normal challenges, especially in uh, our country, you find maybe at times, uh, you might be working with the players and uh, you find them maybe they are not good enough or rather you are not uh, uh, well equipped with the items that you are supposed to use at this particular time. So you find that uh, mostly, as we see it in most of our teams in the country, you find that the equipments cannot be provided by the teams. So you find that at times it's very difficult for us to give all that we have to the players. What Thomas lacks in his quest to keep our players in prime physical condition, he and the team more than make up for on the pitch each weekend. What I usually say, you work with whatever you have. So at this point, this is what we have. So how can we work with them? We work with whatever we do, uh, we have by this time to beat our opponents. It doesn't matter maybe if they overcome me with uh, some things, things like nutrition, but if we get to the pitch, we put everything aside and then work and give our best at the pitch so that we can emerge as winners. Uh, effect that uh, fitness has on injuries is very clear that if you are fit, you are free from injury. If you are not fit, you can easily get injured because fitness comes even with the type of mind. If your mind is ready to face the opponent, you are ready to go. So if you are definitely clear and ready to face anything, because uh, you find that whenever you're fit, you are not prone to injuries because your muscles, everything is ready to partake any activities that you are going to be given. So fitness, I can say shortly, if you are fit, you are, uh, let's say 99, to one injury free. 
That determination and dedication will certainly make Coach happy. Hi, I'm Frank Nuttall, head coach of Gormaya Football Club. Welcome to Gore TV. When former Gormahia tactician Bobby Williamson accepted the position of Kenya national team coach, he was charged with finding his own replacement at this great club. His candidate, Frank Nutter, a coach with an impressive CV and someone that we accepted from the get-go. Our mindset, if he's good enough for Bobby, then he's good enough for us. I came to know about Gormaya through um, uh, my predecessor, Bobby Williamson. Um, and uh, when Bobby was uh, moving to the, the national team job, Bobby um, con uh, contacted me and asked me if I'd be interested. He'd been recommended me by others and spoken to other people about me. And uh, he contacted me and said, asked me if I'd be interested in the job. And uh, as, the, as the chairman of the club, I'd, I'd asked uh, Bobby to, to help him find a uh, someone to replace him. The FIFA coaching instructor has also worked at various clubs over the years. Amongst them, Middlesbrough, England's under 20, under 17 and under 18 national sides. Frank has also had an impressive tour of Asia. Previously, um, I'd been working in, in China at a club, uh, Qingdao Hainyu club, uh, as assistant coach. Um, and uh, as well as I've been with uh, in Qatar with the Qatar under 23 and uh, national team as assistant coach. Um, so that they're the most recent assignments. Um, but I'm, I'm also a, a FIFA instructor in an Asian football confederation, uh, coach education instructor. So I've been tying those things in as well. He takes over the hot seat with the aim of helping Gorma here retain the KPL title. Yeah, given that I've come in, I came in with uh, nine games to go, and uh, the, the club is where it is, and the, the team is where it is in the league. I, I would have been foolish if I if I if I would have come into the club and uh, and just decided to do it all my own way and not uh, seek opinion and uh, advice and suggestions from 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 the staff. Um, so. I've used their, their knowledge of the club and the players uh, and Kenyan football uh, to, help, to, help, to help me and I've given them their place you know, and I think that helps and I've given them their, their roles, I've given them their place, uh, I've acknowledged their importance uh, in, the, in the process of trying to, trying to be successful and, and uh, win the league and, um, and I think that helps when you're trying to build a team off the pitch. But how is our new coach finding life so far at this great club? I'm enjoying it. It's a great experience for me. Um, it's the uh, first time I've been in Africa. And um, every day I'm, I'm experiencing something new and learning something, learning something new. So yeah, it's very good, very enjoyable. People are very friendly, uh, very open, and uh, very, very helpful. Um, so. You know, and uh, so I can't complain in terms of uh, the hospitality I'm, I'm, I'm receiving from everyone, apart from the opposition supporters and things like that. Yeah. In some quarters, Natal has been credited for the rebirth of Giorgio Diambo, and we certainly welcome Blackberry's return to form. Their attitude of the players is, is, is first class, and uh, they're very motivated, a very motivated group, and um, they're, tr the, they're trying their best. Um, for for the club, for themselves, for the club, for me, um, and for the supporters, and as well as mentally being very strong. Uh, technically, they're they're good players, and we've got a good team. It wasn't an easy start for our new coach, and it took four games for Natal to record his first victory, a 2-0 win over Chemilil Sugar, and a game in which we displayed our patented style of fluid football. Something that we've gotten very used to over the years. Following that win, Kogalo fans and our coach breathed a collective sigh of relief as we went back to the top of the KPL log. For now, there's just one focus for our coach and our club. With just five rounds of football remaining, Natal will be looking to do exactly what his predecessor did one season ago. And if Gormahia do repeat as Premier League champions, 
Natal will have found his way into the hearts of our beloved 12th man. And it certainly looks now as if we are headed for a second successive Premiership title. However, just a few weeks ago, it was anyone's title to win. In mid-September, Sofapaka FC had found its way to the top of the log following their win against Moroni Youth and our 1-1 draw with fellow championship contenders Tusker FC. For our new coach, it has been a difficult transition to the Kenyan Premier League. So, when the league's best defence paid us a visit, the three points that we needed to climb back to the summit might have looked like an unlikely prospect. Coach rang in a couple of changes from the previous week. Here is a look at our starting 11. Jeremonyango, as usual, between the sticks. The immense Musa Mohamed, Harun Shakava, David Owino, and Kevin Onwatch deputizing the back. The midfield powerhouse combo of Godfrey Walusimbi, Baba Kizito, Eriko Chieng, and utility man Collins Akoff, with Blackberry and Dan Serenkuba making up the dynamic front line. And Nasser Doka gets this encounter underway at the City Stadium. Following a few early chances from Chimilil, this lovely free kick from Daniel Muragi being the highlight, we took control. Danny Sarankuma and George Blackberry of Diambo caused all sorts of problems for Chimilil's back four, and it was Sarankuma going close in the opening minutes. It certainly didn't take long for the pressure from our front line to bear fruit. A lapse of concentration from Chamberlain allowed Dan Serenkuma to get a bit creative with this finish on the stroke of half time. Just catching the Chamberlain goal line with the defense napping completely. That is Danny Serenkuma's 11th goal of the season and it has brought life to the city stadium. After the break, we look like a club possessed running directly at our opponent's backline until none other than Mr. Reliable, Danny Serenkuma, grabbed his brace 10 minutes after the restart. A second goal for Gorma here. Danny Serenkuma gets Gorma on the way to securing a permanent position at the top of the league. And the fans here at the Sydney Stadium will celebrate. They will dance because Danny Serenkuma in the 55th minute has actually almost sealed this game and a much needed three points for Gorwa here. We should have made it 3-0 as Eriko Chieng was gifted with a pinpoint cross for Patrick Oboya, but his shot went easily by the Chemilil keeper. Regardless, the win put us in the driving seat as we get down to the business end of the campaign. Oh, absolutely de delighted for everyone in the club to get that uh, that three points today. Um, the players were magnificent and uh, they've uh, really put a, a big shift in today and uh, played a really good game. I get involved. I kick everything. I head everything. You know, I try to try to uh, support the guys on the pitch as much as possible. I keep saying it. You know, every game is going to be a battle and um, yeah, it was good to get three points today and it's good to stay at the top of the league, but there's a long way to go, so we'll just take it as it comes. When we return, we meet up with Gorma here's number one fan. Hello, Gor, Gor, my, go, 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 go,
Welcome back to Gorma Here TV. Thanks so much for sending in your suggestions for our Player of the Month here on Gorma Here TV. As always, there was an overwhelming response. Hey, my name is Gatuso, and you're watching God TV. Collins Okoth is a footballer that many see as the bad boy of the Kenyan game. So much so that the hard man in midfield has been nicknamed Gatuso. The name Gatuso was first given to me by Michael Kinyi when I started playing for Gore. I don't understand where it came from exactly. I actually don't play a rough game, but I'm a hard tackler. And there are specific times when you need to play hard, as well as times when you need to lose in a bit. So each and every match has its own unique approach. Some matches are soft, while others are quite tough. So I do both soft and tough. Okoth has had his run-ins with almost all of the clubs and coaches that he has played for. First, it was with current Tusker coach Francis Kimanzi. Then, Kimanzi was the coach at Mathara United. This was the place where Okoth began his career. I grew up here at Baba, and I spent my early years in football in Babadogo. Then I proceeded to Tasca Youth, courtesy of Coach Miner. But before that, Mainz had supported me when playing for Babadogo, and even made it possible for me to participate in Norway Cup. Immediately after, I joined Tasca Youth. At that time, Ghost used to attend Tasca Youth training, so he picked me from there and made me sign for Tasca team. Gradually, I rose to where I am now. When I was still a kid, I used to accompany my elder brother when he went to watch God playing, and I wished to play for them one day. And my dream came true. When the 27-year-old joined God FC in 2009, he had more than one run-in with the then coach, Zedekai Otieno, as well as the man that replaced him, Croatian Zravko Logarusic. Good things are already good things, and uh, you have to jump on the bad things. First, you have to wake up the players. That means you have to tell them, some of them, they were big headed. They thought they're big players. And after a few trainings, uh, my job is to let them know how much they don't know. Because they don't know how much they don't know. That's the reason why I'm here, to let them know how much they don't know. After when they realize, I know, and they realize they don't know because they did, they, they, they thought they know. Everything is easier. It's safe to say that Gattuso's immense talents in the middle of the park more than made up for his volatile temper. His indifference to the former Gorma here coach Logarusic was so telling that he walked out of the club in 2012 to join Sofa Parka. I left Gor because the then coach Logarusic had already formed a bad perspective concerning me due to what he had been told about me. So I had to leave and join Sofa Parker. Unfortunately, Sofa Parker had very little to offer in terms of payment. So again, I left and headed to Tasca. And when Kim came, I benefited a little bit from his money. But we fell out when he was luring me to play for Madare, and I didn't like that option. After a short stint at Sofa Parker, he moved to Tasca. Six months later, he was back at Godway here FC. <laughs> And it appears that we are seeing a different Gattuso in 2014. A mature player who appears to have learned from the past. Let's call him Gattuso 2.0. Before, 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 I was going to discipline before, but I need to change. It's true. I was quite indisciplined before, but I later reformed. I was assigned to one of my friends by God Chairman who actually cancelled me and showed me the light. And he's setting his sights on a return to international football as well. I've played 19 matches so far. I hope the coach will notice my hard work and give me a call-up again. Gattuso is a player that has found his way into the hearts of the Gorma here faithful. Hi guys, uh, my name is Adjaro Soja. 
I'm the Chief Commandant Kugalo Defense Force, or if you like, you can call me Fan Number One Gormaya. And uh, uh, this is Gore TV. For many years, Gormaya die hard fan Jared Obonyo has wowed Kenyans with his flashy attire branded in the club's colors. My name is Ajaro Soja. I'm the Chief Commandant Kugalo Defense Force. Jaro was born on 3rd August 1980. Uh, I discovered uh, football when I was nine years old. Katika uh, Kijiji uh, Chaudento, that is Kauda uh, game, uh, Sea County. This is a man who lives, walks, sleeps, and dreams. Gorma here, FC. I, 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 I searched for the school. Uh, that's where I got to the school called Nyabengi Primary School in Sakwa Bondo. Uh, Nyabengi, when I, uh, I got to the school, I came back to my mom. I told my mom that, Mom, I think uh, I've got the school that I'll now be comfortable uh, in. Uh, she took me there. We have taught the headmaster. Uh, he told the headmaster the truth why I want to, to join the school. And uh, the headmaster, he laughs. Eh? I remember he laughs. Eh? and said, welcome. And uh, I moved on in Nyabenge Prime School uh, until standard uh, seven. And uh, I can say uh, there also I was, on, I was unlucky because they changed the uniform again to blue. I asked, there I again said, no, I'll not finish uh, standard eight here. I have to look for another school that put on uh, like Ogalo, the green and white. I again look for another school called Okola Primary School. That's where I now finished uh, 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 Standard 8. And uh, when I joined Hono Secondary School, I got that the school was, even the, 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 the team jersey was just green and white like Ogalo. I just thank God. I said, wow, this is the school that um, I'm now, I'm now happy to be in this school. Uh, Jaro, hymns from game in Kenya Siaya district. It was here that he first heard about Gorma here FC. A match against bitter rivals AFC was being broadcast live on radio. That was enough for Jaro Soja to become Gorma here's number one fan. I remember uh, one day I was I was sent home for school fee, and, and uh, it was a weekend. It was on Saturday. Uh, on my way to home, I got uh, Samwazi. Uh, they were listening to radio. You no, know, a long time. Sometimes back there were no TV, so a lot of people used to uh, radio to, to listen to football. Uh, then I can say that who introduced me to football was a uh, commentator, that is uh, Jaco Silvester. Uh, I heard, uh, heard Jaco Silvester uh, commentating the ball. Ugol na pira, ugol na pira, ugol na pira, goal! In the map of Sana, Kabidi Nikaichini, Niuliz Waze, what's going on? Uh, uh, they told me that they are now they are listening to football. That, it, that was uh, AFC versus Gormaya. Uh, and uh, lucky enough, uh, Kogalo uh, beat AFC 2 0. His first trip to the stadium resulted in a win for Gormaya. The club had grabbed a fan for life. I went to Toko Mwanda City Stadium uh, to witness uh, Kogalo. Uh, beating Tasca uh, like a Bukenge. And they did, they beat Tasca 3 0. So I'm proud that my first game to watch Kogalo live in stadium, they beat Tasca Kama Bukenge. Uh, from there, I became very popular. I uh, became very popular I'm all over in social media, in media houses, in Gazette newspapers. Jaro coined the term Ginewa Sekao a term that stuck with the club throughout the incredible run in 2013. Jaro Soja is the embodiment of the club that he is so passionate about. When God won the league, I was, I was so excited. I was like, you know, it's like, it's like I was mad. Some people thought that Jaro is drunk. I don't use alcohol, but uh, Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. I, I really thank Jesus. I really thank Jesus. Jaro Soja, as he is better known, tirelessly markets the club at no cost as a result of his obsession with the team. I sat down myself and asked myself, how do you promote something? Eh? You know, for you to promote something, you have to do something uh, very different from other people. You have to be creative. Uh, you, have to be you have to be attractive, you know? 
I used to brat myself, Gormaya, just to promote my club uh, just free. Uh, and uh, you know, some people have, have been thinking that maybe I'm getting something from Gor. I, I love Kogalo, and I don't want even Kogalo to pay me. They are not paying me, they're giving me nothing. And I'm, I'm happy to be that, that way. Yeah, so the, for those, who are, who, 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 for those who, are, who are thinking that maybe I'm getting something from Gor, please they can confirm from the office. Jaro is doing this thing for free. Just like the rest of us, only he wears his love for the mighty Kogalo on his sleeve. That's all the time we have for this week's show. Remember to keep the conversation going at Gormahir TV. Thanks for watching and bye for now.